How much heat can your dash camera withstand in these hot summer temperatures? The temperature inside the car is too high, and the dash cam will be turned off to avoid damage to the device. We took a lot of popular brands like Viofo, Thinkware, Viewroid, Blackview, and a few more, and we tested them in high heat environment to see. And you wouldn't believe it, one of them actually was lasting at over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So if you want to know which dash camera is going to work the best in a high heat environment like Texas, Florida, or California, or many other places, we're going to show you which ones actually last and handle the most heat. Let's go. We have two Fluke multimeters that will be using uh, K-type temperature probes, along with a Thermo Pro as well, one to monitor the actual device, and the other one to monitor the cabinet temperature power supply, so it's consistent power throughout, thermal imager, and this is the grate that we'll be using inside the unit. We did mount a piece of glass to it, we're not using plexiglass, to mimic as if it was mounted in a vehicle. Over here we have our giant oven. The cool thing about this is we verified that it does get to the temperatures that we required to get to, and also it's quite large in size, and that allows us to kind of peek in and uh, just make sure everything is working as it should. So let's get to it. So we want to verify that the calibration is correct between the oven and the actual fluke meter. So we did a little test and as you can see, there's very minor difference between the two, but we wanted this to be as accurate and transparent a test as possible. So we have the unit in there set at 140 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to turn it on. So we currently have the oven going at 145 degrees. The failure point of this unit should be about 150. We're just slowly letting it warm up. The A229 Pro on the left, A229 Plus on the right side. Taking a look here, this is the oven temperature. This is the Pro, the upper number, the Plus, Pro, and the Plus. So it's been coasting at 160 degrees Fahrenheit for some time now. Looks like we're gonna have to crank it up because it is still uh, recording in parking mode. So internal cabinet temperature is approximately 172 degrees. The unit itself is 171 degrees and that's when it shut off. And that's this number right here. The A229 Pro shut off at 171 degrees. This one is reading 168 and change. So it looks like at 180 degrees. The plus is still going. So there you have it, the Viofo A229 Pro shut off at just over 170 degrees Fahrenheit. And the A229 Plus was still running at 183 degrees Fahrenheit. It did shut off shortly after that. You may want to consider the A229 Plus if you are worried about those high heat environments. So this will be our setup. What we're doing is we're attaching a Fluke K-type thermometer with 1% accuracy to the body of the unit and we're adding a secondary probe and then there's a third one here to monitor the cabinet temperature of the actual oven. So we've set up the camera to monitor a phone that has a clock on it that way we can just kind of check the time and see you know exactly when it failed. Here we have the temperature probes going so it's slowly creeping up. So we set it for 150 degrees inside the cabinet. The top probe is the oven temperature. The bottom is the grill grates, which is close enough to the unit. This is the one that's actually strapped to the unit. So obviously the unit will be a little bit cooler until it does heat up. So the device turned off. So there you have it. The Blackview DR970X Plus LTE shut off at about 189 degrees Fahrenheit. When we actually took our heat gun to see how hot the dash camera was operating, it was operating at 205 degrees Fahrenheit. As you can see so far, this is the unit that has handled the most heat out of the units that we've tested so far. So up next we have the Vioroid D21 4K and the FineView GX 4K going head to head. So currently the cabinet temperature set for 190, it registers 176. 
the GX 4K has already shut off uh, in the range of 178 degrees Fahrenheit to 181.9 or 182. The view road is still going strong. It's still on currently. Let's see if we can get a shot of the green light. There we go, it's still on. The other one is already off. So we're probably gonna crank it another couple degrees and see if it uh, shuts off finally. So we brought this up to 200 degrees Fahrenheit because it hasn't shut off after a while now, which is the D21. So we're gonna let it ride out for the duration of this. Uh, it's currently eight o'clock right now. And we'll check back in about 15, 20 minutes. Okay, so we cranked this up and we had the oven over 210 degrees Fahrenheit and we could not get the Vuroid to shut off. And for that, we actually decided to kind of abandon the mission of continuously trying to get the Vuroid to shut off. But here is the actual heat temperatures of the Vuroid, Viofo, and FineView. As you can see to the right, the Vuroid had a max temperature of 269 degrees in the cabin. The center temperature, which is the CEN, is 207.6 degrees Fahrenheit, which is what the Vuroid was measuring with our heat gun. And the min temperature with inside that cabin was 82.5 degrees. In the center is the Viofo A229 Pro. It had a max temperature of 251 degrees inside the cabin. The center temperature, which is 176.1 degrees Fahrenheit on the actual unit. When we move over to the FineView GX 4K, the max temperature inside the cabin was 229.6 and the center temperature was 196.5, which was basically what the fine view was metering when it shut off. So now, now that we just fired on the oven here, we're gonna slowly let it get up to temperature. Right now, uh, we're coasting at 160. It's going to take about 10 minutes to heat up, and then we'll let it ride for about an hour, and then we'll check back in. All right, so just a quick update here. All three units are still going strong. I have the cabinet temperature set for 195 degrees. As we can take a look here, it is also roughly around that. U3000 and 4 Pro. Unfortunately, we had a glue failure. It looks like the uh, adhesive didn't hold the weight of the unit and it did come off on the 70 my, or my guess is the N4 came down and took down the 70 my unit as well. But as we can see, all three units are still going. So it sounded like the AA-10 turned off and it is currently at 194 degrees, 198 degrees actually. Cabinet temperature of inside 200. The unit is officially off. There's no more green light. Let's see if we can get a quick thermal reading of that unit right there. The temperature inside the car is too high, and the dash cam will be turned off to avoid damage to the device. So although the U3000 did turn off, I just hit the cabinet, it did wake up for energy saving mode to still record, so that's a plus. The AA-10 has shut off, I just let it cool down, it did turn back on into parking mode. Okay, so the test is done with the Thinkware U3000, the Vantrue N4 Pro, and the 70My A810. Now, a couple things I want to point out. The N4 Pro and A810 both fell down off the mount, um, which isn't really good, and we are worried about that being 100% accurate in terms of the testing, because they did fall down. So we're being a little reluctant on these specs being 100% accurate. However, you will see that I have the radar imaging test that we tested, and the U3000 was testing at 201.7 degrees Fahrenheit. The Vantru N4 Pro was testing at 194 degrees Fahrenheit, and the A810 was at 179.9 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so let's go over the rankings here. And you can see from the top to the bottom, Vuroid is number one, Thinkware U3000, number two, Vantru N4 Pro, number three, Blackview DR970X plus LTE. The 
VOFO A229 Plus, Fine View GX 4K, and the VOFO A229 Pro. The 70 My AA10, we don't feel that the information we had was accurate in terms of testing. And uh, so we just, we're going to leave that one out and put that it's not applicable in terms of this test. Now, however, um, we want to point out a few things. The Thinkware U3000 did not actually shut off at 196 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. It was in smart parking mode. So it may have lasted into higher temperatures, much like the Vuroid. But once you get into this over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know if we're going to melt these units or what's going to happen. I'm going to remember some of these units are our inventory or we use them in our own vehicles. So um, needless to say, this is what we got as a result of our test. Be interesting to see if there's anyone else who's doing tests similar to this. And we'd love to see what your results are. We know there's going to be some reservations as a result of this test. So we kind of just want to go head on and answer them right now. Question one. Why did you not test two or three channel dash cameras? Well, realistically, it all comes down to space and time. We only have so much time in the day in order to actually sit there and watch this while working in the background. Also, we have the amount of space. And as you can see, when we were conducting the tests, a lot of times we had at least two dash cameras in there at all times. So that way we could condense the amount of time needed to, do, to conduct these tests. Another reservation, which was brought up to us by Retro Car Guy, is technically when you're using the electric oven and the fan spinning, it's actually circulating air. And when you have a dash camera actually sitting inside a vehicle, what's going to happen is you're not going to have that air circulating. You're actually going to have still air. And he said the only reservation he has is that that could be affecting the outcome. Now, is it going to be a massive difference? We don't know. But we do know that getting any of the ones that have the heating elements in it are a lot smaller in size than the one that we used. And we wanted to make sure to try and have uh, even air, even heat dissipating through the unit. And we were just trying to uh, keep things as consistent as possible. How do I know you didn't skew the results by putting like the Vuroid in like energy saving mode or putting one of the other dash cameras in a mode that would make them look better than the other systems. And this is going to be a common concern, but let me tell you this, all the units were using time-lapse mode, except for the VOFO, which was using low bitrate recordings. So even the Vuroid was using time-lapse mode. The Thinkware U3000 was using time-lapse mode. And you can tell when the Thinkware U3000 shut off, which was around the 200 degree Fahrenheit range, it went into smart energy saving mode, right? And the main reason why it does that is because if it gets too hot, it will still detect impacts, which we verified in our video. I hope you enjoyed our video on which dash camera can withstand the most heat. If you do have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and recently, we just did a collaboration with Ariel from Vortex Radar. So feel free to take a look at these three videos. We're going to leave the links in the comments. And we actually do his Kia EV9. We complete the installation and we have some Q&A talking about electric vehicles. We're also talking about some installation advice. And if you are looking to support us at Safe Drive Solutions, check us out, safedrivesolutions.com. If you're looking for for professional installation in Greater Vancouver or Greater Toronto, check us out. Thanks again. Cheers.